right, what's up, everybody? Video Rot, episode number 36. Uh, as always, it is Tuesday, uh, 8 p.m. Central Time, and that's the time you can catch us if you want to join us live uh, streaming these. Otherwise, an abridged version of this pod goes up the following week on Tuesday as well. But this week is a special occasion. I remember last week we were talking about arcade memories, and um, we kind of said we'd do a tier list. We weren't 100% sure what we'd do, but then I thought, wait a second, we have to do the new Metallica record. The whole world stops when uh, Metallica puts out an album. And and maybe uh, the people that we usually talk to aren't really versed in the music stuff because we a lot of times talk about, um, you know, films and stuff. But it's just a big deal for me. I have to talk about it. And uh, I know a lot of people are talking about it. I know whenever uh, album cycle starts rolling around for them, it's once in a blue moon. Everybody and their fucking mom is talking about it on YouTube. Everybody's making their review videos. They're fucking... Oh God! Yeah, it's so everybody like, oh, it's awesome or it's fucking terrible. Everybody oh, and everybody. When got, is when is that YouTube thing gonna die out? That is so stupid. It's just how the algos work, and it sucks because you can't always trust them. Um, they're always heightened. Like you know, there'll be like some guy that you'll you'll watch a YouTuber that um is portraying himself to be an uber fanboy and he he is a fan but like he really he'll be like great like then don't act like you're like this like a oh, cream in your pants and then somebody will trick you and act like oh this is fucking terrible and then they're yeah, like hey yeah. it's pretty good i fucking hate it dude so we basically live in a society where um we accept clickbait but yeah that's just yeah. the way it works and we all expect it you know everything you read you expect it to be lying to you but i try um, to stay away from those videos I meant to go. It, yeah, I try to. At a principle, I try to like not yeah. click on them. But sometimes you can't avoid it because sometimes it's, every, you know, if it's a particular topic you want. It's just hard to sift through. Like when this, I love it. Half the fun of something like this, an event like this, is just wa reading people's thoughts, regular people, not yeah. the media, regular people. So sometimes you have to do it. Same thing with movies, man. If I go see a movie that I think. You know, I, I'm really curious what people thought about it. I, I go straight to YouTube and be like, hey, let's let's see what everybody else said about oh, it. Oh, I do too. Yeah. You did, sometimes you can't avoid it. Um, But anyway, um, so we are going to go ahead and get started. I know I know we normally talk about stuff we've gotten, but I, I think we can kind of forget that this week unless you had something you absolutely want to talk about. No, no, we can. We can yeah. Skip it. I, of course, got the vinyl and the CD of this, so I'm not going to show it to you, but I, I do have it. I meant to have it over here so I could... Uh, what What is the vinyl? Look? Is it anything special? The vinyl? It looks... It's the same cover. What do you mean? It's a, I didn't know if they had, like, a color colorway variants. Yeah, yeah. Like every, they have so many different variants, so if that's if that's your fucking thing. Uh, I just got the Walmart variant because I they had, like, the yellow black marble swirl, which to me fit the theme of the record better. I'm like, oh, it's cool, but everybody... Yeah. There's, there's a million different kinds out there. Um, but anyway, we'll kind of review the album as we go, right? Track by track. But maybe, do you want to, maybe we can kind of talk about it really quick, just in general, without talking about tracks, just to kind of give like an overhead. This tier maker I found, uh, I, I just pulled up somebody's already made tier maker. They don't have an F on here, but I don't think there's an F on here. So I don't Let me look. Let me see if I have an F on there. I don't think there's an F on here, uh, but. Uh, well no, I don't have enough. No. Okay. I uh, all right. So, um, we'll start with your thoughts since uh, we might differ. We might have a lot in common with this, but uh, what are your thoughts on the record? First of all, did you do your homework, Riverman? Because I was hoping you did. Hopefully, you didn't just give it. I didn't want you to just give it one listen. Fifteen minutes ago, I've been listening to it all weekend. I've listened to this record front to back. I'm not gonna lie, at least twenty times. I've listened to it probably two or three times. Okay, I was hoping you'd do your homework a little more because I just wanted to be fair because and I didn't want to I would never want to give a record like this uh, a review or talk about it after even two listens because opinions change fast on records like this and in metallic especially. Um so because this is the kind of record I think has the potential to grow and I'm like I I don't know. So Maybe my perspective is going to be a little bit different after really consuming this record for since Friday night, Thursday at midnight, actually. Yeah. All right. So what are your immediate impressions and did it change with each listen, at least in your couple of listens or what? Uh, yeah. You said two actually, or three. Like what's, what is it? Two or three, Todd? <laughs> Which one is it? Uh, uh, actually it went up, uh, it was three. So, but okay. I had it like, uh, 
I was playing at the gym, so I'm like, so one I, of the that's times a good I'm, place. Yeah, I'm not like really sitting down and actually looking at the lyrics and everything like that. Um, I was, you know, I was surprised. Um, it it's it's a mixed bag for me. Like, there's some of it I really like, and there's some of it I don't. So, uh, well, I hate that I have these comments up on my phone because I took notes. This is not a perfect system at all. I wish I could, I wish I had two monitors, but who has t who has room for this? Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I mean, honestly, the record itself was everything that I could have hoped it was because I don't expect it's Metallica. I don't expect anything that's consumable right off the get go. I wanted something that was solid and that had the potential to stick with me and maybe grow over time. And uh, and it just not be Saint Anger. Uh. <laughs> this is this 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 is the type of album you want to drive around and listen to on your you know in your car because it like beats hard and yeah. Well, did you get a chance to do that? Great production, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so that um, that was important for me because so I listen to it every way you can think. So when mm -hmm. it dropped at midnight Eastern time on Thursday, I listened to it here on my big monitor speakers just alone. And I, mm -hmm. I, I just had a drink and I was drinking and I was listening to it and taking it in old school. And, and so I had some decent sound. I listened to it in bed. I went to bed and I put my uh, AirPods in. I listened to it quiet in that space. Um, I listened to it while I was working with more bass. I adjusted it. I listened to it driving. Driving's the best. That's yeah. it's always the best place to listen to any music. Um, and um, so I had to get the full gamut of, of everything. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it's a mixed bag, too. I think it's a mixed bag, but I don't... Maybe not as mixed as Todd's is going to be, but, I mean, I guess we'll get into that with the tier list. But I will say the highlights right off the back. With, with that, not tracks. Just in general. If you guys have watched any reviews about this record, I'm not going to say anything that hasn't been said by basically everybody. It's pretty much unanimous. This is Hetfield's record. He sounds phenomenal. Uh his his voice is phenomenal. I don't even want Todd to argue about this. It, he sounds no, no, awesome. no, no. He he does sound good. And I actually I thought the highlight. I don't know why, but I loved uh, the production value when it came to the drumming. Like I think Lars sounds awesome. No, the, the that's another ply light is the the production. The production is fantastic. Some people um, that don't have ears <laughs> say it basically is just a continuation of Hardwired, kinda, but not. Uh, to no. me, it sounds even. I thought Hardwired was a good sounding record. This I sounds think this, a lot better. It sounds even better. The bass just cuts through so great. The yeah. bass is thumping on every track. Uh, there, there's no, you're not, there's no missing Rob's bass, and it sounds thick. The guitar tone is fucking thick. I love it. It's chunky. Um, and there's always going to be people that sh with Metallica. There's people that shit on everything to guitar tone to. Uh, oh God, R Lars rides the fucking ride cymbals too. Every fucking thing. Like it's just like they get so nitpicky. I think the guitar tone is awesome. I think uh, Mac was listening to it, and he said uh, he didn't like the way the vocals sounded. They were too low. I think they're great in the mix. I love how kind of – they're not too in your face. Yeah, I like how they're kind of low. Yeah. I mean, I can hear everything just fine, but they're just mm -hmm. low enough to where – and they have just every bit of reverb in, like to give it kind of a live uh, feeling. And they're low enough to where everything else is heavier. It just sounds – it makes the drumming and the guitars and the bass just so much thicker. I have no pro. this might be um, – I mean, this might be the best sounding Metallica record since the load days. Yeah, in my opinion. No, that's what I was gonna say too. No, I agree. Um, it doesn't value sound like awesome. the load albums, like in in production, but I think it's it's just got yeah. And the drums are, they sound great too. And uh, people, they sound the, it's the best part for me. I thought. Yeah, and uh, so people are going to always have opinions. Uh, I think it's James Hetfield's record. I think he sounds phen phenomenal. I think uh, there's a lot of fucking great riffs on this. Um, he's just a superstar. The weak ones, obviously, is what everybody is saying. Kirk Hammett, the guy's fucking lazier and shit. I don't know what this. I don't know what happened to him. Um, I don't think. I think people maybe are a little too hard because it's not like the leads on this record and the. You could say the same thing for the last record and even starting with Death Magnetic, but really on this one, I none of it's offensive or anything. It's just it's so cut, copy and paste. You could you could take them out and throw in another solo and it'd be yeah, like yeah. the solos are just improv they're just yeah. told, you could tell there's improv one or two takes he's not writing anything um he's got a pocket of space to play and he just shreds something in key uh and he does and they're the same they're entertaining solos but they're not nothing special he just he no look, he's improving he's he's playing in the key of the song which is always going to be fucking e for metallica which is fine or a actually with like lots of turn is actually an a but anyway 
And then he just pulls out all the normal Kirkisms when you don't actually write something. It's double stop, double stop, uh, fast blues, pentatonic lick, more double stops with a lot of wah. And that's how you just improv. Like If I were to pull out my guitar right now and just improv over a track, it's going to sound sh like that. You're just, what are you going to do? You're going to play in key and some scales. And you're just going to improv. That's what improv sounds like. That's why a lot of blues players, uh, and I'm not saying Kirk Hammett's the only offender at this. Try going to see Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton is the same way. He's lazy because all he does is jam just the blues scale and key, and it kind of comes off as like samey. But um, anyway, it's not offensive like people talk about. Like, ah, my ears are bleeding. But yeah, it's like, dude. None of his solos elevate the song, so any of the points I give to these songs, it's not because of Kirk Hammett. It's all Hetfield, it's the riffs, it's the song structures. Um, and maybe he could have made some of these songs even better if they did take it to a new level. Because yeah. um, you could you could probably cut out all these solos altogether, or, like I said, you could literally have anybody else go in there and delete it, and okay, I'll just put in another solo. Whereas, like, you you can't imagine the solo for Unforgiven not being in that song or the solo for Master Puppets not being in that song because they actually are a composition in themselves and they they literally build up and take the song to a different height and these are just like placeholders. You know what I mean? I they ever think about firing Kirk Hammett? They can't do they're not gonna do that shit this this far in their career. They're gonna <laughs> keep their uh the core the core three especially. But anyway, like I just don't know I, I don't know if they have too much power in the studio. Like, I kind of want them to get Bob Rock again because it's like in, in the sense that, like, I have nothing. Like I said, everything else about the record is fine. I'm not shitting on Greg Fiddleman. But Bob Rock was the guy that, like, was really pushing Kirk Hammett to <laughs> write, write really good stuff. Like, there's the famous Year and a Half Life Metallica documentary where he's really pushing Kirk Hammett, uh, like, on the solo to Unforgiven, which is mm -hmm. the, one of the best solos. Like, it's a great solo. Yeah. And, uh, like, he's really busting his balls, giving him a hard time, and he's getting pissed. And he's like, you know, after he did a take, he uh, he said something like, uh, so now that you're done fucking around, how about you do it for real this time? Where's that? And he do it again. Like, where's that Where's that guitar player, guitar world, guitar player of the year solo? Because this ain't it. Come on. You can do better. He's like, damn it. He's getting fucking pissed. And he, <laughs> he, he pushes him this edge, and he fucking just gets this awesome solo out of him. And, yeah. uh, like, I want that guy that's going to piss him off. But the thing is, is Metallica... They're an industry. Like, I'm, I wonder if they really do have, like, a producer or, like, you know, they're the boss, right? Oh, like, absolutely. a producer is supposed to pull it out of you, just like a director in a movie. Um, I kind of wonder if uh, people like Greg Fiddleman or anybody they brought in at this point in their career would be afraid to really speak up. Because you'd think Greg Fiddleman, if I was the producer, I'd be like, Kirk, you gotta you gotta do better. I want you to come back in a week. I want you to write some solos. I want you to listen to these demos that James is, and you need to write something, damn it, because this ain't fucking cutting it. <laughs> this ain't because it's lazy. It's fucking lazy. Yeah. Anyway, that's really it though. And some people will bag on Lars. I I don't. I I don't bag on Lars at all. I think the drums sound awesome. Yeah, I guess there's no real iconic. Like even in the load era, because ever since um ever since the black album and he kind of went from more of a four on the floor straight ahead, Phil Rudd approach, like that's what he prides himself, you know, driving the song and serving. Mm -hmm. So I don't care if he's technical, but even on like load and shit, uh, there would be like little iconic parts and iconic yeah, fills. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't really think there's too many of those, but I think what he does completely serves the songs. And I think if you take out Lars, everybody says like, oh, Metallica should get a real drummer. That's just hip to say that. If you if you were to put the best drummer in the world um, behind the kit in Metallica, if you could put Dave Lombardo or Joey Jordison or Mike Portnoy, whoever the hell, the whole band would change. And I think the riffs would change because, like, Lars plays with James. Like, he's driving yeah. those riffs and it's making them harder. Most drummers play with the bass and they lock in their rhythm. But Lars, no. Like, in mo when you record an album, most people are going to lay down the drums first. Then they're mm -hmm. going to lay down the bass track, and then the guitars will come in. That's different. Metallica, Lars plays to James. So the bass is coming in last. Mm -hmm. James is like the rhythm house. So I just think you would change the entire dynamic. And you can hear it in this album. Like, everything's got a very rhythmic machine gun marching yep. band yep. feel. And that's because yep. he's just locked in with those fucking rhythm guitars. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway... Unless you wanted to say something before we get going, we could actually get down and break down these tracks. Do you have let's anything break else them down. Right, break it let's down. Break. Oh, by the way, Rob's awesome on the record, too. I got to give him a shout out. He sounds fucking fantastic. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start with um, 
I had them all in order on mine, and then I had to to pull somebody I, else's. I, I got it. So okay. we're going to start with uh, 72 Seasons. It's the title track. By the way, did you listen to... They had released four singles before the album dropped. How many of those did you listen to before the album came out? Um, I I listened to Screaming Suicide. Okay. Um, and then Love I listened Saturna. to... Yeah, those two. Those were the only okay. two. Okay. So that kind of maybe... By the time the album had come out, I had already kind of like listened to the first four a lot. So anyway, 72 Seasons had dropped last. This is the title track. It is a first track. Um, upon it, hearing it at first, to me, was the best of the singles. Um, I I don't know if I still feel that way or not. But, uh, oh, I will say really quick. I was pleasantly surprised because I was hoping to God that the singles didn't represent the whole album because I, I thought most of the singles were pretty watered down. Like they, I was pretty mid on them and um, you know, I'll, I'll let you know if I've changed my mind on those since, but starting with 72 seasons, when I first heard this, I'm like, Oh, well this sounds nothing like Lux Eterna. This sounds nothing like screaming suicide, but you know, it sounded a little reminiscent of stuff they've, they've done before, but it was a breath of fresh air. And uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about how stuff's bloated. That's Metallica for you. Fucking get with the program. Um, this song is bloated like a lot of them, but it doesn't feel as long as like Screaming Suicide to me. To me, it goes by a little faster, but what are your thoughts on this one? This one I actually really enjoyed. This is this is the one I haven't, I didn't hear this single prior. And yeah, I'm yeah I, I had already heard it a lot, but yeah. I'm glad I did because this is my second favorite track on the album, actually. Okay, so... Where where do you where do you rank it? I I put it in as an A for me. Okay, okay. Because I I enjoyed it that much. Uh, it has re great re listen value for me. Um, I this was probably the one I would go to the most probably. This one and another one. Okay, so um, this is this is why I think time helps because. I had already listened to the song quite a lot. So now I'm kind of like, by the time the album came out, I'm feeling other tracks, and yeah. I kind of. I've listened to the album front to back, even with the singles, to see how everything flows, because sometimes that helps uh, a whole package. But I also, after I've done that like uh, 10 times, now I started, now I'm in the cherry picking phase. Like, oh, I want to go back to that track. I want to go back to that track. So I ha I feel like for me to get a real good evaluation on the singles, I'm going to have to come back to it later on. I got to kind of let that die. Because I've, I've, Lux Eterna has been out for like fucking f five months, for yeah. example. So I feel like I need a little distance from those. Um, but Anyway, 72 Seasons, I mean, I kind of agree. I To leave room for I, what I think are the best songs in the album, I was personally going to give it a B, a high B. Um, a high B, that was me. Uh, I don't know. Oh, I, either one, man. I would give it a low A, but so. Okay, so we'll put it here for now. We'll see how it all adjusts as we go. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull my comics back up. I know a lot of people were complaining that there was no ballads on the record. I, those people need to grow up because I fucking love that there's no ballads. Like, why do we need a why do we need a ballad? I mean, like, Metallica, I Metallica doesn't need any more ballads. I, I they they've got ballads. Like, I kind of liked how this album was a cohesive unit. Like, it just I, I, it didn't bother me. Uh, but um, anyway, and some people complain that every song, like, or maybe not complained, maybe just kind of pointed out that every track on the record. Has like a somebody said every every song in this album has a fucking WWE intro entrance music, like a whole like a whole intro, and I'm like that's funny. I'm like I don't know if that's an insult or if I'd take that as a compliment. And and somebody was talking about the bloat, and they made a good point. They're like, you know what I think it is? They said I think Metallica is kind of stuck. You know, they play stadiums, so mm -hmm. I think that they write for stadiums when they, they that you know because it's like maybe a song like we'll get to it. Maybe a song like um. Uh, if darkness had a sun is too long, mm -hmm. right? The buildup is like for, it's like two minutes of intro. Um, and they played that on Jimmy Kimmel cause they did a residency last week, all week. And they played that and they played an abridged edited version. They took off a minute and a half of the song and they jumped in and I'm like, oh, like right, right when the main riff is finally in and it wasn't it just like 15 seconds for the verse kicked. It was perfect. And it was so much better. But if I'm kind of going off what this guy's opinion was, he says, but if you were hearing this shit at a stadium and it's pumping up for a minute and a half and it's slowly mm -hmm. building and you got all the light show, it would be pretty fucking cool. And he's yeah. right. I'm like, so I think they're writing with that mindset, which maybe isn't necessarily the right thing to do, but I, it was just a good thing to bring up. 
Uh, but anyway, okay, so we'll put this at a high B for now. Now we're going to go into Shadows Follow. This is one of my favorites in the record. <laughs> I, I, It's actually my favorite on the record. So I, I'm giving it a fucking A. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and I guess that spoils it. I, I don't... I'm I'm not gonna give anything an S in this record. That's gonna no. have to come with time. I don't think that's that's here right now. But um, I'm pretty much gonna stick uh, to the A category. But I think Shadows Follow rules. Um, I I know. Well, shit. We didn't talk about 72 Seasons enough. I want to ask your opinion. What do you like about 72 Seasons before we move on? Because I want to actually talk about these tracks. I don't know. I I. It's a I mean, little bit of red herring because it yeah. starts off fast, but the rest of the album's not really like that. <laughs> yeah, and it kind of well, it kind of builds up. I mean, people people are bitching about the length. It's like, I not me, dude. I I thought it was I thought it was great. I, it doesn't bother me on this track. I mean, if I was their producer, I could find places where I would like. Okay, I could find see where I I would trim something here and there. But at the same time, like, if if the song is doing me good, it's more Metallica. I'm not going to complain that much. But no, no, there's there's definitely parts in these songs right where I can be like, well. They went back to that riff. I think on the second time, they just went back into the verse. Like without the, you know, there's little nitpicks. But the thing is, is over time, the the album will just identify as itself, right? Mm -hmm. I bet you when Justice for All first came out, I would have said the same thing in 1988 because those songs are long too. Yeah. But now I can't imagine those songs being any other way, any other way. So eventually this will just sort of become what it is and, you know, it'll it'll feel natural. Uh, but uh, yeah, seventy-two seasons is good. I, I think it's interesting how it starts with the bass run. The da -da 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 -da, just the bait. They've never done that, which is great. Um, I think it's a cool build up. Just the da 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 da. -da. It, it's cool, um, and the vocals are cool, and it's got a it's got a solid chorus, which I think is a strength on this record. There's some solid catchy choruses. Mm. Um, but okay, so now on to shadows follow. What do you love about this one? This is this is a great car beat song. Um, drums sound awesome. Um, oh yeah. Uh, the first time I heard this song, though, I I didn't like it. It's it's weird because then the second time I heard it, and I, I thought it was awesome. Probably because of the location I listened to it in, which I probably should have listened to it in every location like you did. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, so I'm looking at the comments. You know, Mac is saying I hate this song. It's lazy. I think he was talking about the the first track, 72 seasons. He's like, uh, I got tired. I got tired of hearing the same thing over and over and over. <laughs> well, you'll you'll you'll. That's that's quite a bit for this album. There is a lot of stuff that lyrically is. It's it's itself. it's re well. That's what I'm saying. That's the bloat, and that that does exist. And I think I just yeah. I'm a fan, so I kind of give it a little bit of a pass because I know what to. I know it's. It's just fucking what they do in the last 20 years of their career. And they always had this problem, and Bob Rock reined them in. They had it with justice. Yeah. Um, but like I said, that's why I think uh, their producer doesn't really get full producer responsibilities because it's the producer's job to be like, hey, why don't you, you know. But anyway, that aside, it it's not an album killer for me. It's just a flaw. But even justice, man, justice is a, a flawed masterpiece. We all know the record sounds a certain way. It's got no bass. It sounds very cold and sterile. Um, the songs are very long, but at the same time, like I can't imagine the album being any other way. Like I, yeah. that sound yeah. is justice, and it's just like so. It is what it is. But uh, yeah, shadows follow. I love this fucking song. I think this is great. This is um, one of the best, if not the best. And yeah, I know what you said. There's like that middle part. Where I just love that fucking simple ass riff where the drums come in and lock with it. Yeah. Dude, you fucking bang your head. Yeah. Oh, you bang yeah. your head good, dude. I, I fucking love it. And um, I I think the lyrics are, for the most part, solid on this record. I mean, maybe not perfect everywhere, but I think they're solid the, record, uh, lyrics. Yeah, there's some songs are pretty. Yeah. We'll, well let, let me know. I mean, because I, I we'll kind of take it song by song so I can really analyze it, but um 72 seasons i think are fine uh lyrics and shadows follow i think are i think are fine it's it's all very catchy there's a, obviously a through line theme kind of going throughout the record um i really can't say a bad thing M maybe the thing that would take this track to an s tier is like kirk not being lazy <laughs> i don't know <laughs> probably that's probably the reason why nothing's going to be an s on this is because uh kirk doesn't uh pull his yeah weight. yeah right probably. but like i said i don't listen to slayer for the solos do you no, no. Nobody does. 
Yeah. I, I, you listen to Slayer because you like the rhythms and you just kind of tolerate the solos and they're part of it. But nobody does. There's that like uh, there's that meme of the the kid that drew the horse and the first half of the horse is like great, but the last half of the horse is, like scribbled crayon. And then people and then I they they put the first half is Slayer riffs and the last half Slayer solos. And yeah. I it's it's so great. So I'm trying to kind of look at it like that because it doesn't prevent me from listening to Slayer records, but. It just, I just think they would be all the better if uh, there was something on Kirk's end. But James is the MVP here. Anyway, yeah, there's nothing nothing bad. And this song is long like all of them, but this one just, I love it. I love every second of this one, man. It gets me pumped. I want to go running to the song. Yeah. Because it's just got man. that bop, bop beat to it. Um, okay, uh, so next, I believe, is what is, uh, God, is it Screaming Suicide? Yeah. Yeah, keep the, keep the track because I'm looking at the comments. Is it Screaming Suicide? Yeah. Screaming all right, suicide. Screaming Suicide. This is the second single after Lux Eterna, and I did not like this song when it came out, when it yeah. came out. I still don't love it, but you know what? There, I, I still attest there's not a bad song on the record. There really isn't. It's not an offensive song. It's not a bad song. It's just kind of boomerish. Um, the blues. Were, it's this has some of the this this is a song that has a couple of the cringy lines, right? This is this is the one, right? I, uh, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. But none of it's offensive. I do like the breakdown where it's very simple. Just the down, 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 down. It's cool. Right before the little spoken word thing comes in. It, it does rock. That's another one of those like classic head. But, but you know, I don't know. Uh, it's probably a C for me. That's me personally. Uh, but some yeah. people say this one's great. Like it's all over the fucking world with this. But I don't, I don't see it. I, I find myself, I don't know. This is kind of catchy. Um, lyrics it, are just, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's... It, the verses are, it's its not, even though it's like the song doesn't hit me, I acknowledge that the verse lines are kind of catchy. No, 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 no. Like, it, it's, it's, it's composed and structured well. It just doesn't grab me. Um, I don't know. And, like, the riffs are fine. You know, everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I gave this one a B minus. And this was, yeah. And okay. I would, you can give it a C. I, would I was going to call it a C plus. Yeah, yeah. But we'll, like I said, we can, we can adjust and we'll see how we are uh, once we get more. Um, can you uh, pull up track four for me? It should be a uh, sleepwalk. Uh, sleepwalk. sleepwalk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one, this one's fine. Um, I, it, it starts with that thumping bass. Um, I, this is one of those ones where it's like, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't not like it. Like I like all the riffs, you know, now we're getting into load territory yes. and a lot of this album sounds like black Sabbath, which is great. I don't have any problem with that, which it kind of sounds like load reload, but a little bit on crack, but a little faster, a little beefier. Um, and I don't have a problem with that. Uh, and this is down and nah, 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 nah. it's a black Sabbath riff. Yeah. And, uh, gosh, how does the, um, yeah, it's fine. It's a solid course. Like I think it's a, it's one of these C songs. I would put it ahead of Screaming Suicide, though. I don't know, but what do you think? I actually, this is forgettable to me. I'm, I mean, the, their lyrics are cheesy. I mean, they're not as cheesy as some of the other ones, but, um, yeah, this Wait, one is just, the, yeah, yeah. Um, it doesn't really have the re-listen value for me. Yeah. So where do you want I, to put it? I gave it a, let's see, what did I give this? A C. I gave this a C. Yeah, I'll give it a C. I can't. Okay. I, I, I'm going to put it above Screaming Suicide. Would you or no? You probably wouldn't? No, I put Screaming Suicide ahead of it. Do you? So I put, yeah, yeah, I would. Okay. So we'll do that for now. Because it's uh, actually catchier than this. Now, uh, like, I, I don't, like I said, I listen to Sleepwalk My Wife Away and I don't, uh. I, nothing about it's bad. I like, but yeah, it's just nothing about it's like great either. Like everything in it's okay. Everything's okay. The verse is okay. The riffs okay. The chorus is okay. The hooks are okay. It's just okay. Um, now you must burn is next, right? Yes. Okay. So, what? What? How do you feel about this one? This one at least stands out because it's got the, a bit of a different pace to it. The um, only good thing about the song, in my opinion, I mean, the guitar solo is fine. Um, the riff is cool. I'm not going to um, give any props to any guitar solo, by the way. No, that's not going to come up my radar. Um, <laughs> None of them. But. but the fact that they actually had one in this song. Um, but overall, <laughs> they're on every song. But okay. Yeah. More me more memorable than some of the other ones. 
Um, but this one, I, I gave a C. I thought it was pretty much, it was, it was just like, uh, sleepwalk my life away for me. No, no. I, I think it's, uh, I, um, this one I liked a lot the first time. And this one after like repeated listens, like, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, to me, it's like a heavy load song, which I don't hate. You know, it's, it's got a sleazy Sabbath riff, which is cool. The song that what makes it is the bridge where they do the Alice in Chains like droney mm. vocals there's there's a lot of that by the way i feel like this album is black sabbath it's got a lot of aic a lot of 90s grunge some sound garden riffs which i like that I, I i i dig it and even some of the vocal melodies sound like they would have been on an allison chain song the way they phrase a vocal line um because yeah. there's a few of those i wouldn't have expected to come out of metallica i don't know i i like uh you must burn better than you i guess but um i would i would give it a b low b personally but uh, so where would you where would you put it on C? Uh, no, I put it high C. I mean, it's it's not terrible. Um, I'd probably put it. I, yeah, I'd probably give so it a C plus low B. So let me give it a low B to split the difference. Uh, I remember when people were first talking about like, oh, it's like the Sabbath true. I'm like, no, it's not Sabbath true. It's not that heavy, chunky. Yeah, it's slow and sleazy, but it's more like a reload, slow and sleazy track. Um, for me, it's, I, a, I, it's a grower for me, probably. I, 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 I don't know. I like the lyrics. I like the vocal line. Uh, the lyrics are cool. The witch hunt metaphor, right? I don't know what they're talking about. It sounds like cancel culture to me. Yeah, you could apply it to anything, but just like talking about the witch hunt and the burning of the witches and stuff. I think it's cool. I think it's structured cool, and this has the, the dude. This has one of the best middle sections because it because it right before it goes to the middle session, it's that sleazy Sabbath. Down, 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 down. Dun, dun, dun. it's really groovy right don't and that dun, dun, dun. and then that's where the, like the drone vocals come in i think it makes the fucking song so it gets at least a b for me um is is it lux Eterna next or is it crown which one you got to help me out i'm getting confused it's either crown a barbed wire or lux Eterna. uh so you must burn and then it's lux Eterna. okay so lux Eterna. i have to say when lux Eterna first came out i was just like uh eh. But as more tracks came out, um, this one had the longest to sit with me. So maybe that's telling of what might happen for some of these other singles. But you know what? I still don't love Lux Eterna, but what's happened since November is I've seen live performances of it. They've been on Stern playing it. They played it on Kimmel. Uh, they play, And just watching it live, it sounds so much cool. I think, I think when I see them live, the energy is going to elevate that track. And uh, you know it's it's three minutes. It's just a fucking real fast thing. It it I understand why it's a single. It's the only one of the tracks they chose as a single that I get why they chose as a single. Yeah. Right. Because I'll tell you when we're all done with this or as we go, I would have picked way different singles. But Lux oh, and Turner yeah. makes sense because it's catchy. It's almost got pop hooks. Da 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 da. da. It's singy. It's kind of like got a. It makes total sense. So now it's like, I don't hate it, uh, but. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. What do you think? I actually think that I think you hit the nail on the head with uh, this being kind of a arena rock song. Uh, or um, I didn't like it the first time I heard it, and it is one that I would go back to quite a bit because of what you're saying, how punchy and quick it is. I I do like that a lot. And, and now, especially, it comes right in the middle of the record, and you yeah. have this like short song. And maybe to some people that might seem like ah, like that's just kind of fucking out of place, but. I, I think, uh, like I said, now that I've listened to the album front to back so many times, now I'm kind of cherry picking my favorite songs and kind of getting used to those. And I'm hoping once I go through the tracks that I'm listening to now, then maybe I'll be like, well, let me go back to uh, Sleepwalk or whatever. And then maybe I'll baby that and who knows. But I don't skip Lux Eterna because it's so fast and it's almost like a yeah. palate cleanser. Mm -hmm. It's not like, so yeah, I don't. I'm looking forward to it. I bet you it'll, I think it'll light the place up live. But uh, where do you, uh, and of course, this one's like the throwback. This one sounds like New Wave of British Heavy Metal. It sounds reminiscent of like Kill 'em All. It's even got a couple of like riffs that almost sound like they were lifted from Kill 'em All. Um, but James sounds fantastic. I'm not even going to talk about Kirk Solo. It's so short that it's uh, inoffensive to me. I think, I thought people were getting their panties in a wedge when this song came out and they were complaining about Kirk. Now I hear the rest of the album, like, okay, torch away. But anyway, um, I don't have a problem with the solo. I would actually give this a B for me. 
a B. Um, you know, yeah. I think I will too. I think before I would have given it a C, but like just as it's had five months to to grow, it makes sense as a single. It's catchy. It's a super gateway song, and I don't have a problem with that. Um, and as we go, I'll let you know the other songs I would have chose. But um, all right, so next is Crown of Barbed Wire, right? Yes. Okay, this is one of my favorite songs in the record. <laughs> I I fucking love this song. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but to me, this one sounds like a like another Black Sabbathy song. But it's like the best Sabbathy song on the record. Uh, I love the Sabbathy sludge riffs. I love the whole middle section. I think, uh, uh, it, and it kind of, it kind of, it really takes me back to like a reload that, and then it does that, and then, but then Lars brings the beat back, and it makes you groove, dude. Like I'm just fucking rocking my head back and forth. I need the whole thing, and then it's got one of the coolest riffs at the end of the song. Dun, 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 dun. Just like this ringing riff, you'd have to. I'm not even gonna hum it really well, but I love the song. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not thinking the same as you, but I I love it. See, and this one was just kind of dull, nothing burger to me. Um, I if I go back and give it more time, but the first three times I listened to it, it just it didn't hook this me, one, man. This one grooves for me, man, and I I just love the midsection. It just uh, it's gonna sound so cool live. I love it. And, and I'm not used to Metallica doing something like this in the middle section, like where Lars kind of brings this fucking backbeat into a riff. I, I don't know. It's It's got an interesting structure for him, but I dig it. I I'm, I would give it an A, but we I could split the difference with you if you want. Yeah, definitely split the difference because, I mean, as of now, I would get, give it a C. But Oh, okay, I mean, so we're calling this a B. <laughs> I'm not going to go down to C, but I would put it a high B. I, I, I just I love the track. Um. So next, Matt, would Max be... said he would give it a low T. Low T, low <laughs> test. <laughs> hold on, hold on. What? Which uh, which track are you talking about? Because you're not leaving reading comments. Help me out here. Max says I thought uh, this song was gonna kick ass, but damn, the lyrics blew ass. They were so confusing. Which track were you talking about? Because we're all behind. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I, f- fucking horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, haters gonna hate. It's fine. Uh, all right, so let me see. The next track would be is it Chasing Light? Chasing Light, yeah. This should have been the single. I, why this wasn't a single? Because it's not one of the longer songs on the record. Um, and it's catchy as shit. It's it's got one of the catchiest choruses I think Metallica's ever written, like as far as radio goes. Why this wasn't a single? I don't know who was making the decisions to give Screaming Suicide the single slot, or even 72 Seasons, to be honest. I'm not even offended by 72 Seasons, because I guess it hyped fans up after three tracks, and it's like, oh, and they, it gave them a little hope. Like, oh, there's some fast stuff. But why was Lux Turn I Get, but Chasing Light should have been, like, the second single? Or if not the first. I think Chasing Light should have been the first. But I And I have to say, th- this, uh, this Metallic album is weird, because... It actually has positivity. It's like positive lyrics. Mm-hmm. and But it's like the whole, you know, it's talking about like depressing stuff, but it's always got like the positive message at the end. Chase the Chasing light is positivity. Even the chorus, you know, chase that light, lean on me. Da-na-na-na. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's very like uplifting. Anyway, and it, you know, without darkness, there is no light. Type of type of thing. What are your thoughts on it? <laughs> he does that high. He does it no, really well. No, I I put the vocal range in here as uh, one of the things I did enjoy about it. I actually thought this was a good song, and I I could see it being a single. Um, and it's, gave, it's got fun riffs. It's bouncy. It's it's mm-hmm. it's snippy. You know. Yeah, it's it's definitely kind of fun. I I, I gave it a B. Um, just because I thought it was solid. I mean, I didn't blow me away by any means, but uh, I did. I did enjoy it. I did have a toe tapping. I think it's one of the best album songs in the record. Uh, so I don't know if we're gonna have too many uh, in the A category because I keep having to split the fucking difference with Todd here. Uh, but I'm, I guess we're gonna put it in the B. Um, but I'm gonna put it a high B. I'm gonna put it at the highest B because to me it's just single material. Mm. I really want this to be low A though. We might have to adjust this at the end. All right, so. Now it's uh darkness, right? Uh darkness out of yeah, sun. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on this one? You didn't listen to this one. I've been listening to this one for like two months, three months now. 
Um, my, uh, my quote that I put in here is thank you, captain repeat. It's, it's, it's very, uh, very repetitious. And uh, uh, yeah, it drove me insane. Now live, it could be cool. I get the build up, but the thing is, is they real if you watch the Jimmy Kimmel live performance, that's exactly how the song should have been on the record. Like, mm. like literally it needs to come in with James and, and they start off the da -da -dun, da -da -dun, and then right into the whole, right into the main riff. Like uh, da -da 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 -da. none of this like drums for four bars. Then James comes in for four bars. Then like a tease of the riff. Da -da -da. It's just too long. It goes on for like a minute and a half too long. They should just get to the fucking point and they, they should um honestly, there's a point I can't even remember. There's a point like after the bridge that they go back to the verse again. Like, no, after the bridge, go yeah. right back into the chorus. It's classic song structure, but just do it. Um, with that said, if they if, if if they had done that, or like I said, if you listen to the Kimmel performance, it gives you a perspective. I think there's a good song in here. I, I think the riffs are kind of cool. I think the chorus is catchy. It's just we need less of it. Um, so I don't know. Some people love this song. Some people hate it. But I'm, I'm with you where I think it's just this one, this is the fattiest of all the songs on the record. Like, if I had to yeah. pick one song they needed to trim, it was this one. Yeah. And this song scared me that the whole record was going to be like this. Because Darkness, because uh, Chasing Suicide was overly long too. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no. But luckily, I, I don't think that's the case for most of it. But um, where do you put it? Uh, I would probably put this. I put it at a C. Yeah, I, I I'm happy with the C too. I, I do like the rhythm guitars underneath the leads at the end. The dum 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 dum. That that's really cool. Like I said, there's cool shit here. The only crime is just it's too long. It just needed stuff cut out of it. And I can, you know, there's probably already versions on YouTube where people have hacked it up. But uh, yeah, so we'll give it a C. Would you say it's uh where does it fall in our C category? Right low here? C for me. You think it's a low C? Yeah. Oh, I like it better than Screaming Suicide. You don't? Yeah, I would put it, I would put it ahead of that. That's fine. Um, because I don't hate Darkness Out of Sun. I thought this was better than Screaming Suicide. I just think it's too long. Um, we'll go ahead and put it at the top then. Um, I don't know if it's better. I, you know, I don't really know where Sleepwalk um, falls. Okay, so now we are in Too Far Gone. Okay, I have to say it right now. This is one of the fucking best songs in the record. I I love this song, dude. It's I, it's, it's just so catchy, dude. It should have been a single. Yeah. This should have been a fuck, and it, it might be like they still might release more singles, but this should have been a pre-album single. I think they picked the wrong songs because when they when Lux Eterna came out, people were stoked. Then I felt like when they released uh, the other tracks, people were like shit talking, like what is this? Like no, guys, no. If they would have released Lux Eterna, Too Far Gone, Chasing Light, yeah, I think it would have just been like they might have had like I, it just could have been a a totally different like feedback thing on YouTube and shit. But Too Far Gone is. Super catchy. I, great I, chorus. I reject my 72 seasons, and this is the second best on the album, I think. You reject your 72? Oh, 72 well, seasons. I, I, second put best? That, I put that three. Um, 72 I, seasons, three. I'm going to mm. actually put it ahead of Shadows Follow. I just think it's you a great song. Oh, for now. I mean, I okay. just think it's it's a great song. It's it's super catchy. Yeah. I, I hum it all day long. Oh, yeah. Can I make it through the day? And it's like... Let me make it and through it's, the and, day. It, <laughs> and it's one of the songs that turns positive. Like, you know, yeah, cause yeah. it ends with, I can make it through the day. Too, am I too far yeah. gone to save? You know, I I think it's just, it's a toe tapper, man. And, and the riffs are great. <laughs> it, kind, it kind of, uh, it kind of harkens back to uh, uh, No Remorse. Da -na, da -da -na, da -da. It's kind of got some kill em yeah. all riffs, but like a catchy fucking modern chorus. Yeah. Uh, and it's got the fucking harmonizing guitars at the end like the iron maiden the it's so catchy yeah no you you could put it you could put it ahead you talk you know, me you, into can it can you hear what i'm talking about the harmonizing yeah, guitar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Da, it's just a it's honestly i think like i said if i give this time to marinate give it more time this could be S tier. I think it's a fucking good pop song, and I don't know it why is. it's not. It, it's you're right. It is better than Shadows Fall. It's not, not too long. It's it. not too yeah. late to release it as a single. Um, okay, and next, <sighs> Room of Mirrors, Todd. 
Room of Mirrors. One of my um, favorites on the album. <laughs> this is one of my favorites, dude. I once again, this should have been a single. I think personally, I'm. I I don't know. I didn't give us enough time because I didn't I didn't enjoy it. It really didn't I, do it for me. I I love. Oh, first of all, really quick. Too far gone. You know why that should have been a single? Because it's like five minutes long. It's the second shortest song or four and a yeah. half. It's perfect. Room of Mirrors is catchy as shit, dude. I it's punky. It sounds very punk, real fast, kind of punk riffs, and just really, really catchy. It, honestly, the vocal, the vocal lines, the verse, and uh, the chorus, it almost kind of sounds like Offspring. I don't know why I was thinking of like a catchy hmm. old school Offspring song, but uh, I think it's catchy as hell. I think it's, there's a really cool video out for it too. That's like animated, it almost kind of looks like uh, Metalocalypse and stuff, and they're like in a haunted house. It's pretty, it's pretty funny, but I think it sounds fantastic. Super punchy, super catchy. Todd doesn't have. He says he hasn't listened to it enough, so I get to veto him. I get to put it in the A category. That's fine. Had, all right. <coughs> um, now the last song. This is the one most people were talking about. In Amarada. What do you think? It's the longest song they've ever written. Technically. So this one is very interesting to me. Um, it's definitely something. That's different from Metallica, I think. Um, I I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Um, and I know it's very polarizing with people, but I I enjoyed it for what it was. Okay, it's definitely so different. I I fucking love this song. Okay, so I can understand some criticisms. Like, okay, so it's eleven minutes long. Um, it's kind of harkening back to the Outlaw Torn Fixer days, like the last tracks, the big epics on Reload. Um, it's kind of kind of got that vibe. Um. Now, I, I I can see where people might want it to do more in the big fat runtime it has. Like, for example, the last six minutes is bliss. Mm -hmm. Like, from the, from the, when it hits that middle ground, but it's like the first five minutes or six minutes is just like a normal song, right? It's just, okay, verse, chorus, chorus, verse, chorus. And you think for like a big, long, epic 11-minute song, like he would go more. But yeah. you know what? I don't really know if I can knock it for that because it doesn't it's 11, feel like eleven minutes. It doesn't feel like eleven no. minutes. No, it could, you know what it feels like. The, the best way I can uh, describe it is it's like the song Layla, because mm. Layla is just a regular song, but then it's got this giant extended outro, the whole piano, dun, 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 and the slide guitar. It just goes on and on for minutes. It almost kind of yeah. It's like okay, the song ended five minutes ago, but we're gonna listen to this beautiful outro. That this kind of feels like that to me. Um, and it works. It doesn't feel like an 11 minute song. The song itself is very black Sabbath. Again, mm -hmm. it's a Sabbath riff. Um, and I even like the, I, the lyrics are very simple, very simple, but I like them. I have no, I have no problem about these lyrics. I think it's kind of a cool concept, you know? Uh, this is definitely a song that they would play at a concert after something really heavy, just to kind of get people. I, a, I a hope rest, they do. You know? And right. Inamorata, I guess, is Latin for like a like a scorn lover or whatever, you know. And he's talking about the concept of being uh, married to misery and shit like that. I think it's kind of cool. I, I have no problems with the song. And uh, dude, like I said, once it drops in the middle, we get the only clean vocals, like the whole only mellow part of the whole album, right? Where mm -hmm. James is actually singing, and that, I, you know, I've always loved James Hetfield's voice. I, I think he's a guy. I, I can understand if you don't, but dude. His voice is butter on that part. Like his his is give me chills, dude. And you have Rob coming in with the geezer butler. Doom, doom. It's even the middle part of the the main the main riff sounds like Black Sabbath, but that whole mm. middle section it kind of sounds like seventies Black Sabbath, like songs yeah. like Sol Solitude, right? Yeah. Like because even the vocals, it almost sounds like a Solitude Aussie. Need you mo? It's just how he would sing. And um, you got the geezer bass, and you got him playing the little guitar over it. It's and then it that's where you get the build like da 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 and then it goes into a solo which is totally serviceable in this song. It doesn't steal the show, but it's totally fine. It complements fine. And then even when it comes back, they change the riff up, but it kind of goes back to the chorus again. And then it kind of has this outro again where it's just like it gives me chills. I think this song's great. I think it um it has the potential over time to be one of those like bleeding me songs where it's just top tier, where it's totally yeah. S tier. I can see that. Uh, and I think it's a great way to, to end the record. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, I don't know, man. Like, honestly, in my opinion, I would put Chasing Light in A, too. But 
all of these songs could be the best. I don't know. So I guess if you're asking my opinion, this is where we're sitting, I guess. We're at, this is, you know, we got four A's, we got five B's and three C's. But if you were asking me, I think Chasing Light is an A as well. And I think Crown of Barbed Wire is also an A. So honestly, for me, I think six tracks are an A. What does that leave? Like what? Nine tracks of B. Sorry, three tracks of B, three tracks of C. It's pretty similar regardless. How do you think this averages out for the record? I give it a B plus. I thought it was good. A good record. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's a solid record. And that's uh that's about all I could ask for. Right. Mm -hmm. I just I just don't think I think a band like this, forty two years into their career, they could be a ninja and assassin and secretly release another Master of Puppets, but nobody would realize it. Even if it came out, nobody would acknowledge it. Because it's yeah. just never going to be authentic. I would rather them do what they're doing now. It's like be a Sabbathy, mid paced, whatever you got to do, man. Like if I if you're going to come off cringe trying to play like a fucking '80s thrash band, don't do it. I you know it's like don't try and recapture it. I'm totally cool with. They have enough of those tracks, personally. I actually think this is one of their better better records. I mean, I think it's better than uh, Death Magnetic, and I think it's uh, I think it's better than Hardwired. Yeah. So first of all, time. I still want to give it time because I'll tell you hardwired, you know, yeah, you kind of, it's a Metallica record. When it came out, I listened to the hell out of it for a little bit. And then I didn't go back to it. Like yeah. I know all the tracks on it. I, I wore it. I'd say I wore it out for a couple of months. Right. And I really absorbed it. I know it front to back, but yeah, it's not one I really revisit, even though, it came on a playlist, like a couple of tracks came on a shuffle, and I hadn't heard them in a while, and they sounded good. Like a couple of them were like, and some of the songs I didn't like on Hardwired started to kind of sound fresh to me. So it's kind of uh, like there's that one song, gosh, uh, what is it called? Um, Am I Savage, dude? It's like the fucking, when I first heard the record, I'm like, that is the weirdest fucking, like that one suck out like a sore throat. I'm like, I don't know if I like this, but. It's got the stankiest riff on the whole album in the breakdown. It's fucking awesome. So it's like you kind of like gra you grasp onto these little things that help you branch off and appreciate more of it. Um, and Death Magnetic as well. When Death Magnetic came out, I mean, I was 22. I was fucking listening to the hell out of it. I still loved it. But you know what? Over time, but I never like, like I always thought My Apocalypse was one of the worst fucking Metallica songs ever. <laughs> yeah. Some people love that song, dude. I'm like, that song, that song. I just, I wish the songs on Death Magnetic had this production and performance of this album. Because I, that, I... That's what makes them so much better than the other ones, too, is the production but, value. But I think I think there's good songs on Death Magnetic, for sure. I think mo I think it's mostly really good. Uh, but the songs are too long, right? But over mm. time, just like this record, you kind of accept it. Now I listen to Death Magnetic, and I'm like, I, it's just the next part. Like, I know where it's going to go. And to me, it just feels like Death Magnetic. It doesn't feel too long anymore. I think that's going to happen with this album, too. Just like Justice, just like Death Magnetic, it's going to become what it is. Um, yeah. It's just those early reviews, and it's like, ah, oh, you just got to get used to it. But Death Magnetic, man, there's good tracks on that. I just wish the there production is. was better. I yeah, just wish... Because like they were going for this like garage band thing where James's vocals were super dry in the mix and everything was super flat and dry in the mix and there's no vocal harmonies it's just him like and it's over compressed so it's clippy and loud, um, but dude I'm like I remember when that album came out I'm like I wish this had like the production to load because some of these songs would be great I'd love to hear um, some like call and response vocals from the production and James and stuff so I I don't know um, and then Death Magnetic has like the the what suicide and redemption which is the um uh instrumental which is fantastic i love that song um but i i like death Magnet, but the, i didn't listen to death Magnet for a long time i i had yeah. worn it out that first year or two or whatever and then i hadn't gone back to it in pff, i don't know it felt like a decade maybe not but i when i got the vinyl this pa uh, uh, this past year a year ago i i sat here and listened to the vinyl i'm like this sounds fresh it's i, I liked it i was like it I sounds was good on good vinyl yeah, oh first of all it sounds way better on vinyl Okay. <laughs> they they put the because they secretly remastered it and fixed it and they put it in the guitar hero metallica guitar hero uh a fixed oh, version yeah. and everybody for the longest time was like uploading the guitar hero version of the album because it sounded way better mm. and that must be what they put in the vinyl when they press the vinyls later that has to be because it sounds so much better but the songs i i found myself like now it's a nostalgic record 
to me it felt like new Metallica, but that album's 15 years old now. <laughs> that's like, geez, that's crazy. I know. So it's like I don't know. I think time is usually good to Metallica records, um, because I could. The thing is, is you go in the comments now and people are listening to this record, and you'll have some people that are saying, "Oh no, this album sucks." It's like Death Magnetic is their best album. You have to imagine Death Magnetic is 15 years old now, so you have a lot of people that are in their mid 20s that Death Magnetic was their first Metallica record. So they think that's Death Magnetic's the best album? Because think about it. It came out 15 years ago. So you have all these people that are in their mid-20s where that was their gateway. So um, just like how I feel about Load and stuff. Yeah. So I totally get if you were a boomer guy and you were you were born in the 60s or 70s and you listen to Metallica from all the way up into the Black Album and then Load comes out, I could understand. Yeah, when, pe yeah. when people say a song like... Uh, fucking port oh poor poor twisted me's filler cure is filler two by four is filler i get it now as an as an outsider's perspective like i get why this pissed you off and i get how you might see as filler but i grew up with those records i was like 10 years old when yeah. like load and reload were coming out so i love all the songs even if i can acknowledge that some songs are not as good as others i love the whole records i i just and it was my coming up so there's kids now that are seeing that for Death Magnetic. There's people that are a little bit older that see that about St. Anger. It's got its day. I don't oh get it. Oh, my God. No way. Yes. I'm telling you. Ugh. It's had a renaissance. It's got its renaissance. I'm telling you. That's just the way it goes. Um, and there's some kid, right, that is really into Stranger Things that got super into Metallica this past year because of Master of Puppets, right, because it became trendy on TikTok. Oh, that's right. And they hit a new fucking push with young kids. There's a whole bunch of kids out there that are buying this record as, as their first new Metallica album. And in 15 years, they're going to be like, fucking 72 Seasons, man. That's my record. Well, it's a good record to start out with. I mean, it's a solid record. Yeah, no. So I'm just saying that's just the way Metallica is. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I'm I'm trying to like give it space to breathe. I think it fits in. I think they're doing... <sighs> People are comparing it to Hardwired um, in that like, oh, but no, to me, Hardwired is different because Hardwired, like this one, explores kind of a lot of their sounds over the years. But Hardwired is different because all those sounds are like schizophrenic. You have Hardwired, which sounds like a fast, punky song. sound, And then you have like um, uh, Atlas Rise, which I think is an awesome song. They hear... Mm -hmm hardwired they did the exact opposite of this album where the best songs were singles yeah yeah absolutely. like literally they released the first half of the record as singles and that's the best fucking half of the record yeah you know so this one i think some of the worst songs are the singles uh which is good yeah but um anyway so you have like hardwired which is like a fast thrasher you had uh atlas rise which is like an iron maiden kind of classic metal throwback you had uh you had uh, um, a track that was like a load track, the the third track. Uh, you had, um, you know, every track was like, oh, well, that's that track. Oh, that's the Justice track. There's a the Master of Puppets one. Here Comes Revenge kind of sounded like Justice to me. And before you got to the chorus, it really did. Mm -hmm. The riffs, it's like, shit, this almost sounds like a Harvester of Sorrow. Okay. What does it, it sound like Battery? I, I think I wrote that down. Wasn't there one song that sounded like Battery? Th this song, though, I got a, this. This album, though, is different where they've taken a couple of elements of their sound, new and old, but they've homogenized it into one cohesive style throughout the whole record instead of like schizophrenia, like, oh, one song here, one song here. So, like, to me, it's, it's kind of like load, reload on crack, but like they somehow fused some classic elements within that style. Like for example, um, like I mentioned, um, chasing light and, sh uh, too far gone. These are poppy radio songs, but they've yeah. got like kill them all riffs in them, you know, but they mm. fit so seamless and there's like quick, fast drumming. The song might be like a certain mid tempo, but the drums are going fast. It's just, yeah. they've, they've just kind of created one. The whole album belongs together. I feel like every track, is a cohesive big picture unit more than hardwired is. I agree. Whereas, I agree with that. Hardwired. I think hardwired has got a lot of good songs. Like hardwired is 12 tracks as well. And it's got, I think the first, the first six songs, disc one are all fucking A's. I think they're great. And yeah, I think spit out the like, bone, of course, shit. Yeah. Spit out the bone. The last track on disc two is an A as well. And then I think track seven through 11, it's really only like, I guess it'd only be five tracks. I don't think any of them are bad, but they vary. It's like, okay, we just, 
it's just the pacing's all wrong. I think if you would have ordered all the same songs differently, maybe Hardwire would be stronger. It's just it sucks when you have like six bangers that are all really good, and then you 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 take a dip to like a five or a six, and even like a seven, because some of those songs are not bad songs. They're just it's very noticeable when you were riding high, and then you got this block of songs that's just a little bit more mid. So maybe uh, 72 Seasons does a better job at balancing the tracks out. I don't know. But like I said, there's not a bad song on here. Every song is totally tolerable because it kind of just gels with each other. There's there's stronger tracks than others. But yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree, at least right now, it's a, it's a B plus. I think it's a totally solid record. I think it's as good as it could be for a record uh, that just came out a few days ago. Um, mm. You know? So what are the people saying about it? What are the uh, non-Metallica fans and what are the Metallica fans? It's saying? Metallica. It's all over the place. Like, what do you think? It's it's everywhere. It's like, um, so it depends on where you go too, right? If you're going on Metallica's spaces, if you're going on Metallica's YouTube channel, Metallica's t uh, Twitter, and the, of course that's your Metallica fans. You're going to get like a lot of praise. Um, if it's just a regular post from like Blabbermouth or Metal Sucks, it's nothing but trolls. Right, oh, okay. just, shit, just shitting on it. So it's kind of hard, honestly. It's it's hard to tell on both sides who's being honest or who's not. Like in that, that goes both ways. Like you see a lot of negative, and they they just come off as troll responses. Like you know, these these are people that are just shit bagging the shit bag. They don't really know. So it's like who maybe some of these are legit criticisms, but you really can't tell because there's so much trolling. But same thing if you go to like. Um, a heavily biased Metallica place where it's a bunch of fan. A lot of it's positive, but it's like, you know, some of these people might be the Metallica fans. I just love everything and they're not critical enough. So you never know who to trust. So you just yeah. I don't make... know about Aaron, but I, I would tell you if the songs were shit or not. I, I used to be that guy. No, hundred percent. I used to be that guy. And the first, the first chip in the wall for me was St. Anger. And oh, I had to, God, really... yeah. but I had to come to terms that like, yeah, I don't like, I, I fooled myself. I was trying to fool myself. That, oh, you know, I wouldn't say bad stuff about it at first. This is like 20 years ago. But, like, I wasn't focusing on the bad shit. I was, like, trying to say the good stuff. Because, you know, even I could find good things to say about St. Anger. But, like, I was not talking about, like, the screechy cat vocals stuck in an escalator on, like, Invisible Kid in the, the branch and stuff like that. Um, I, wish so I, now, can go, I wish I can go back and uh, have a photo of your face when you first heard of St. Anger. But you just be like, what is this shit? Yeah, dude, it was like it was the sound of innocence dying. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but if, but I was like, I'm in. I was totally in denial. I'm like, you know what? This isn't happening. This isn't happening. You're gonna like this, Aaron. You're gonna <laughs> love this. Uh, How many times do you listen to it? Oh, I I forced myself to listen to it quite a bit. But now I, <laughs> it's one of those records that, yeah, it's kind of. But and I every now in a blue moon I pull it out and what and that's another vinyl which I have because I'm a Metallica fanboy. Uh, I have the vi that vinyl sounds better too, by the way. Just like sonically, it sounds because Saint Anger physically exhausts your ears the way it sounds. That yeah, ringing yeah, tin yeah. drum, it's just mm -hmm. it's an assault, dude. If I, you feel you feel like you want to take a nap after it, yeah. and you want to like just turn off all the fucking sound in your house, dude. Um, it's a little bit more pleasant sounding on vinyl, like it's warmer, which is good. But then, but at least then you can at least focus on the songs not being good. Like, okay, well now I can actually judge the songs because I'm not marred by the production. And you know, there's good things, but th what what you have there is like a whole bunch of demos that really needed yeah, reworking yeah. and actually turned into songs. Um, but whatever, good riffs here and there, good ideas here and there don't make a good album. Uh, but anyway, and then when Death Magnetic came out, dude, I was like, you know, the production's rough. But there's good, and the songs are long. I mean, it's it's same thing. But there's there's the songs definitely are way better. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, I I would love to see Death Magnetic with this production. I wish oh, it had God, this production. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I yeah. wish it had this production. I wish because you know what, I, a lot. Of, like I said, they for, they had this weird period during Death Magnetic and even Saint Anger where they were like trying to convince themselves they were a garage band again. Like they're going for this real dry production and they were doing it for other songs. They were coming out at the time. Like they would come out with cover songs mm. and shit around the time. And they were, they were, they kept that fucking dry ass production. And I'm like, you guys just aren't a garage. You got, they are what they are. They used to be, but now they're a fucking stadium rock band. And I yeah. don't think that's a bad thing, but I think you guys need to embrace it. Like you guys need to have like anthemic songs, really cool production, 
you know, it's it's just what you guys are now, and it just, it just wasn't sitting right. So when you hear like the vocals and shit on Death Magnetic, the songs are good, but they're so raw. It almost sounds like they're all one takes. Like they, they weren't trying to be polished. And James Heffel's vo voice is not great on that record. It's okay, mm -hmm. but it's not. His voice is kind of weak. Like there's so many. The hooks are good. The vocals are good. There's just I wish it, he was doing in like like this. Like do good takes, do vocal layerings, because his voice is on fire on this record. His singing yeah. voice, his rasp voice, and his voice. The rasp was like his rasp game wasn't great on Death Magnetic. Um, his like wails weren't like I I do kind of cringe when I listen to uh what's it called um uh day that never comes love is a four letter four letter word <laughs> yeah. never spoken here it's like like but he sings it like it's not good I suffer you no longer this it's just they're not good take the lyrics aren't great in that section but but that doesn't help but also the the he's capable of more um but. I don't know what it is, but anyway, this, this I swear, this I swear, this I swear. His his voice is on fire though lately. I Even like live. that song, dude. That's a great song. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know it's just not perfect. Yeah. Um. Anyway, no, it's it's great. So, <laughs> where does this sit though? Okay, so you like it better. Okay, so not to go too bloated or over long here, I'll kind of wrap it up by saying, to me, there's very there's there's very much three eras of Metallica. There's the uh, Kill Em All Through Justice era. Which and then is the, the best era. But the second era, hold on, is Load through like Garage Days, right? Now, second best era. But there's a bridge. The bridge between those both eras is Black Album. Yeah. It's a, it's a chain link. And then the chain link between era two and era three, which we're in now, was Saint Anger. Like you know, Black Album and Saint Anger are kind of like they're not in either era. Like they got a, they got they got they're kind of just these weird connecting blocks. But Saint Anger led us to the modern era, which is Death Magnetic, Hardwired, and Seventy Two Seasons. Yes. Um, you know, because there is like every era is they, they, they there's like similarities. Um, and to me, at least right now, this is only time will tell. We'll see. Only time will tell. But I think that this is the best so far of this era. I agree. Uh, I, I I swear to you though, if Death Magnetic had this production and this care, who knows? But it it, it isn't, so it's like uh, we can't. But yeah, I I couldn't tell you. The weird thing uh, is though, I had zero zero expectations going into this. That's the way to go. I I went in. I I learned not to be. I learned to have an open heart, and I'm like, I'm just gonna like see what comes. Because the singles really threw me through a fucking yeah. loop. Because the singles were all kind of different, and to me, they didn't really or represent. Average. But I'm just saying, like, I, they didn't really represent the album as a whole. And it's like, I don't know. Because the first, yeah, you don't know what to think. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I do like I do like the modern retail. Like I said, there's great songs on Hardwire. But, yeah, this one just is the most cohesive. And this is kind of what I was hoping it was going to be. I was kind of hoping, I was kind of expecting it to be, actually, the songs were better than I thought they were going to be. But I was actually kind of bracing myself for a lot of, solid songs average to solid songs that maybe there wasn't like one individual track that was like oh god this blows me away but as a whole the album was better whereas like hardwire has like a lot of songs that are great but they kind of stand out alone yeah they have like four good great songs no i think there's seven it's I, most of the album is really good it's just they all kind of have their own identity and they don't it feels like less of a cohesive album like an actual painting mm -hmm. whereas yeah. this one and um, yeah, so when I heard this, I'm like, okay, every song kind of sounds like they belong together because it's these kind of albums. And yo, yeah, at first it's like, no, there isn't, maybe there isn't a song that grabs you like spit out the bone right away or whatever right away. But these are the kind of albums that grow on you and stick to your ribs and really take on like a life and you, you listen to for a long time. So that's what I'm hoping this is. And there's other records like that. They all, those records end up becoming my favorite albums. Like the, the last Jerry Cantrell solo album, that's the way that yeah. one was. Mm -hmm. you listen to it and it's like okay all these songs kind of sound similar like you know in, not in a bad way but they all sound like mm -hmm. they really kind of blend together um nothing stick it, you like it it's a pleasant listen but you know you can't really stick out like what's my favorite song but you keep listening to it i just want to keep listening to it and listening to it and now it's like dude that that's my favorite jerry album that last one 
it's just because it is it's such a complete body of work and they all belong on that record um there's just something about it i hope this is one of those records yeah i would highly recommend it to especially new metallica fans out there this would yeah your kids are gonna <laughs> love it yeah that was yeah <laughs> uh anyway okay so that's all i got yeah i think a b plus is a great great you know i'll give i'll i'm happy i'm happy with that so Oh, do you like this? Do you like this better than any of the load era stuff? 90s? No. no. Really? You know what's yeah. funny is I just I think now it's down to splitting hairs and I think that's only because I grew up with those records, right? Yeah, absolutely. Cuz cuz that's it. Because load lo, like I said, I'm trying to like not miss the forest for the trees here, but load's the same way. When I really zoom out and look at load, I love every song on load. Yeah. This little this little kid in me that grew up listening to it loves because that was my gateway drug, Metallica. But I can totally acknowledge from an outsider's perspective what the S tier songs are, what the A tier songs are, what mm. the C tracks are. Like I get it. It's not unlike this record. So I think this is one of those ones that, yeah, if you're coming in this record in ten years, you're gonna be like, oh dude, every fucking I love you know, even the bad songs, I love them, don't judge. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um so and and same thing with reload. So if somebody said they like this better than load and reload, I I wouldn't judge them. No, I, mean, I get I get it. So anyway, solid. I'm pretty happy. Like I said, I couldn't have I couldn't have expected better. I was expecting worse actually. So that oh only god, I was too. I was dr <laughs> I was dreading it. <laughs> I was just I was pleasantly surprised at how fucking awesome Headfield is on this record. He's mm. this is I don't know, man. This is he he hasn't been this good in a long time. Uh, so. It just sucks. I wish I wish uh, Kirk Hammett uh, came to play, but it is what it is. Like I said, even those shitty solos will probably just sort of take on a life of their own. You know, like I said, I'll uh, he'll he'll they won't even be the same live. He doesn't even like fucking play the same shit. All these solos, like in this modern era Metallica, that just sound like they're improv out of his ass. He doesn't even repeat them live. He just he plays something totally random in the space because he can get away with it because that's the way yeah, they yeah. were because that's the way they were designed. They don't yeah, move yeah. the song underneath. They don't they don't mm -hmm. float. So whatever, there might be live. I might be totally on. I wanted to play with his ass again, like he did in the '90s on my live videos. He was like playing with his wall on his ass, dude. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, it was fun to talk about this. I'm I'm really interested in hearing other people's thoughts. So hopefully, we get a lot of comments. And please, yeah, let us know what you think, man. I'm sure it's going to be everywhere. Uh, be honest. I'm glad they gave Rob Trujillo his due. I think he sounds fantastic on this record. Uh, and this is one of those. This is one of those albums where. The production and everything else it really elevates all the songs even the even the weaker songs are elevated because everything just sounds great it's such a feast the feast of the years for me so that's it do we know what we're doing next week for episode 37 um i don't know yet yeah i don't know either <laughs> i don't know why i'm just not feeling doing the west craven right now I know oh, was that was that on the do, was that on the docket? We, we talked we talked point? about it. And we we about faced Metallica because it just had to be done. But I I don't know. I I just don't feel like doing Wes Craven right now. I don't know. Maybe it's because I don't feel like I wa I don't feel like watching my soul to take or uh, music from the heart. I guess. I like these uh, album tier lists. I, yeah, I, I feel I, like I feel like we might need to do another one. Okay, we could do uh, Black Sabbath. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but if we have to if we do Black Sabbath, do we want to go all the way and do like the Tony Martin era and all? Because I I know no. them all, or we just do Sabbath and D or Ozzy and Dio. No, I think we should. Uh, I think we should review an album, a new album that just came out recently. Oh, and then do a tier list. Yeah. Well, well, fucking tell me what that album is because I don't know. I don't I don't know either. I'm I'm looking looking up what just came. Yeah, out. Yeah, I don't even know what you've been listening to lately. It's got to be a band, but how many other bands have a new album coming out like Metallica, but also have a giant career to go over? Like, like when Priest comes out with their new record, which they're putting finishing touches on that, that'll be perfect. Right? Yeah, because they got no, so no. many records. But right now, I don't really think there's any other situation like this. I think we should just do say fucking do Black Sabbath because we know they're not coming out with a new record. Yeah, I think we don't even have to get totally obscure. We don't have to do all the Tony Martin, Glenn Hughes. Uh, if you don't want. If we just do Ozzy and we do the three Dio records, that's 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 a huge discography. That's enough. 
Yeah. Now, how how versed are you on the Dio records? Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, and, and uh, uh, I, I Heaven and Hell, uh, Mob Rules, somewhat. I I'll, I can brush up on them. I I haven't listened to the the Dio stuff as much as I do the Ozzy stuff, but I I'll brush up on Mob Rules. Yeah. Uh. So you have to. Um. Let me see something really quick. Yeah, his uh, his three records are all really really good. So uh, if you've never really listened to those records, I don't know what you're. Some people like Dio better, and I don't I don't blame him at all. But so you got to listen to Dehumanizer when he came back uh, in '92, and that's got yeah. TV crimes. Yeah. I but uh, I mean I'll, I'll spoil it right now. I mean honestly, the Dio records are fucking flawless, especially Heaven and Hell and Mob Rules. Dude, those are ten out of ten. Yeah, Heaven and Hell is awesome. Mob Rules is is just as fucking good, man. Uh, it's it's just as good but anyway that's a that's a fun one uh so you might have to beef up i don't know if there's a couple you have to brush up on or if you don't want to do sabbath that's fine let me know we don't have to do it but you know otherwise you might have to brush up on like i don't know technical ssc or <laughs> never say die or whatever if you're not savvy on them no nah, i I'm, I'm savvy on uh not never say die but technical actually i'm pretty good on I wish Pantera had more records to go over because, you know, they're kind of relevant right now with their little reunion going on, which I'm looking forward to seeing them open for Metallica. I'd like to go over all the Ghost records at some point, too. I mean, we can do that. Um, I wish they were a little bit more stacked. But, um, but, yeah, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it more. We'll get back to you guys. But thank you, guys. Uh, remember, you can support us. Uh, we have a Patreon link. We have Teespring. And uh, please, if you're new to the channel, please like us, uh, like the video. Please love us. No, please like the video. Uh, help us out with the algo, uh, algos. Leave a comment and uh, yeah, peruse. We got a ton of videos. Check out uh, our film commentaries, uh, our different podcasts and things like that. Uh, we got something for everybody. So is there anything else you want to say? No, have a great week, everybody. Appreciate right. you. Bye.